Okay, so the bananas are in the batter. Honestly, I fuck with this camera angle. Well, I haven't seen how I look yet, but. It's good. It's good. I'm sure I look great. You can lay on your back on the island and hold that above you like this. Wow, that's slutty. Today, we are going to make a brown butter labna banana cake. And you might have thought I was gonna say bread because most people call it banana bread. But I just wanna clarify that banana bread is actually cake. And everybody who's out there thinking that banana bread and zucchini bread and pumpkin bread is actually a slice of bread, no, it's a slice of cake. And that's fine and you should definitely eat cake for breakfast, but let's just get real. It's got fat, it's got sugar, all of those things are not typically found in bread. So that's why we titled it Brown Butter and Labna Banana Cake. See, I crossed off the bread, you see what I did there. You're going to need brown sugar, light or brown is fine, baking soda, that's the leavener in this cake, two large eggs, vanilla extract, salt, 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter, flour, bananas, they're in here because I'm gonna show you a trick for quick ripening your bananas. And then labna, which is a very thick, strained Middle Eastern yogurt that's like adjacent to Greek yogurt, but even fattier and tangier and thicker. If you want to do like a crackly crust on it, you can finish this cake with terminado sugar. I'll show you that later. The first thing we're gonna do actually is we're gonna ripen these bananas. So I bought these two days ago. They are okay. They're not the ripest bananas I've ever seen in my life. They're not the worst, but what you want for a banana bread is super, super ripe, really sweet, like almost custardy, over, overly ripe bananas. Anything less than that is just gonna be like fibrous and not really lend much flavor to the cake. So what you can do is throw them on a baking sheet and put them in a 300 degree oven, five bananas, and one of them goes on top. So I'm gonna pick my hero banana. I think this is our hero. So then we'll, we'll ripen the other four. All right, step two, brown your butter. You could just use melted butter in this cake. A lot of banana cakes call for melted butter. A lot of them call for oil. But I thought like, why would we just put melted butter in a cake when we could brown the butter, bring out all of its nutty, roasty, toasty flavors, and then those end up in the cake. It's just like, Le it's the level up, it's the melted butter level up. So here's how you brown butter. You cut it, you cut your unsalted butter into smaller pieces so that they melt more evenly. So we're doing 10 tablespoons all together. So there's eight and then nine, 10. And then you're gonna put them in a small pot and whoops and set them over medium heat. Okay, well, because you're here, here we are browning butter. It is in a, I have 10 tablespoons of butter in a pot over medium heat and we're waiting for it to melt and then the milk solids that are in the butter are going to start to caramelize and toast and brown and it will start to smell really nutty and you wanna take it pretty far. I think a lot of people often stop their brown butter like right when it starts to smell nutty because they're scared it's gonna burn, but actually you can take brown butter quite far and I'll show you where to sort of like pull it and call it. Helpful to kind of swirl the pan so that everything melts evenly. That's gonna take like five to eight minutes. In the meantime, let's check on our bananas. Okay, well they're not ready yet. <laughs> so um, I have another thing that we can do while we're waiting, um, and that is we can whisk our dry ingredients. So this recipe uses two bowls. You always wanna start with dry ingredients, separate them from the wet ingredients, and at the last minute, combine them. I hear some sizzling. One thing that's important if you are going to bake a lot is to learn how to scoop and level. So scooping and leveling, is a process of taking a big ass spoon and gently adding the flour to your measuring cup, not packing it in, but letting it like really loosely fall into your measuring cup over whatever vessel it is being held in and then leveling it off as such. And that will give you one perfect cup of flour. It's 
called the scoop and level. This recipe calls for two cups plus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So there's our one, and there's our two. No matter how hard I try, like it is it's just always a mess. Okay, to the flour, we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons each of baking soda and salt. So one and a half, kosher salt. And those are the dry ingredients, and we whisk. Okay, so we're like now sort of on the brink of turning from melted butter to browned butter. You can hear it. What that noise that you are hearing is the water cooking off. So butter, as compared to like oil, vegetable oil or olive oil, has water content in it. And so when you melt it, you'll hear it basically like frying off the water and it's separating from the fat. Something that I like to do um, when I am browning butter is to whisk because that way uh, the milk solids don't stick to the bottom of the pot. If you don't touch it the entire time, they can stick to the bottom. It can be hard to release them later on. It gets very foamy, very quiet, and, and quickly very dark. Like we are very close, and this is when we turn it off because I don't want it to burn, but I also want it to be a deep, dark, caramelized brown. A great test to see like just how nutty your butter is. Let's just put a little bit on a plate and take a look at them. If it were not caramelized enough, they would be really pale. So this is like the color you're going for. It's a dark brown. So our butter is hot as fuck. We're gonna leave it there and let it cool. In the meantime, we're gonna mix together the wet ingredients. So starting with labna. <gasps> oh no. Again? Again. Oh my god. Do you have another placement? Because you better be checking your lava like. I went in and I was like, Lavna, do I see you in there? And it was like, it was full. And I was like, oh, it's not even been opened. It's fine. That shit moldy. You got anything else? I got some Greek yogurt. But I really want you guys to make it with Lavna. That was the whole point. It's in the recipe title. Fucking A. So here's a great lesson. You can use. Greek yogurt if you can't get your hands on labna. I was really excited to make it with labna because I think it's really good with labna and it's even fattier and more moist and more rich and I just wanted everyone here to taste that but alas, my shit's moldy as we have learned in now two episodes. So one third of a cup. This is, to be fair, really fatty Greek yogurt. Um, this is 5% milk fat which is about as high fat as you can get it. So it's going to be a pretty good approximation of labna, but still do it with labna if you can. So the labna is in the bowl. Two whole eggs, large eggs, always when baking unless otherwise specified. And we'll whisk, crack those yolks and just whisk this together. It's going to look like cottage cheese at first, which is pretty gross. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, I forgot about the overhead. Yeah, yeah, we have like every What's up? Is this the new like uh, vibe for the show? Where I just talk to this camera? I kind of it's kind of funny. Okay, so I'm packing one cup of brown sugar. So I'm whisking that in, kind of breaking up some of the clumps. And then one <laughs> teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oh, should we check on our bananas? Oh, look at that. We have brown bananas. Instant ripe. I ripened the bananas in the oven. You don't seem very impressed. Okay, that took about 10 minutes, I would say, at 300. But now they're nice and brown. And they're going to be like more custardy and full flavored and really banana-y. You know something actually that I think is really weird? I think about this so often. Why do, you, why do they not sell frozen sliced bananas. In the way that you could walk into any grocery store in the entire world and you can get mixed berries and strawberries and fucking frozen corn and kale and you can't get a frozen banana and yet everyone in the world uses frozen bananas in their smoothies. It's true. It makes no sense. It makes no sense every person should. But I think we should start, we should get in the banana business. 
Okay, so here's how you make a parchment lined pan. You cut a piece of parchment, save this one for later. You grease the pan, so I'm gonna use this softened butter here and just grease in the pan, getting in all the little edges and the corners and the nooks and the crayons. And then you take the parchment and you lay it this way across the pan so that it has these big overhangs. And these basically become your handles. So the butter helps it stick, and then the batter gets poured in here, and then when it comes out of the oven and you want to remove the loaf from the pan, you don't have to do this thing where you're dumping it upside down. You just use these and you lift it out. And so it's like basically a sling. All right, so let's peel our now very ripe bananas, actually. I think it's better to kind of, look at that, it just pierces right through. Look at, you can see that they are steamy, but they're very soft. So we're putting four bananas in here. So potato masher or a fork, and just kind of work this in to the wet ingredients. And they're gonna break down super easily now that they're so, so ripe. And basically just become like banana pulp. Now the last thing we need to do is add the browned butter. And now I'm just gonna pour this cooled brown butter, streaming it in to my banana mash. It smells fucking good in here, I'll tell you what. It smells gourmet. Gourmet. And don't forget about these last little bits. Like that's literally where all the flavor is. It's at the bottom of, this, of the pot where the browned bits linger. You get every last one you get out a spatula and you scrape those in because that's your flavor. Whisking, whisking. We've got our wet ingredients. We've got our dry ingredients. We are going to add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients, just like this. And we're gonna whisk this together just until it's well combined. Okay, and then that's it, straight into our prepared pan. Every last bit. And then smooth out the top. And then the last thing is we're going to lay a banana on top. Bing. We're gonna cut it in half. So this is the unripe banana just because it will hold its shape better. So I'm cutting this lengthwise, okay? Just like right in half so we can see sort of its silhouette. And then I am laying it down. Oops, I broke it, fuck my life. I am laying it down right in here. And then finally, I'm gonna take some turbinado sugar and just coat the whole banana cake with turbinado. It's very chunky. And so it doesn't melt entirely in the oven as you bake. And so it'll give like a crackly crust to this. And also it kind of gives the bananas this like creme brulee type of energy because this is the stuff that you might use on a creme brulee as it like melts and caramelizes in the oven. Okay, and then straight into a 350 degree oven for like, I don't know, an hour and 15 or so. We'll set a timer. Oh, mama. Looking good. Looking so good. I'm just flipping and rotating because I know that my oven runs hot at the back, and then I'm throwing it back in. I want you to try my bobby cake because you really like olive oil cake. Yes! <laughs> You're so scared of me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna check on the braid. It is caramelized. The sugar has browned. I'm taking a toothpick and I am sticking it right into the center. And we're gonna, hey, watch out, babe, it's hot. Make sure it comes out clean, which it does. Now we have to let it cool for like an hour plus. I mean, there's a lot of heat in that. Banana bread has cooled. We're gonna take this one outside because we've been in the kitchen all day and we're gonna slice into it. What a beautiful day. Who knew we've been inside all day? Okay, so we've let this cool. I'm gonna run just around the outside of it to help it release from the pan. Sometimes the sugar can like caramelize a little bit and it will stick, the sides will stick, but this feels like it's releasing pretty easily. And then here's where we just go, here's the sling moment, because some of it got left behind. 
And that's how you release it. So here we go. Something that I highly, highly recommend when you make this recipe is that it's really great day of, like right now, fresh out of the oven, it's still warm, so yummy. Tomorrow when it's a day old, the best way to breathe new life into it is to warm it back up by crisping it in a nonstick skillet. Crispy's always better. Crispy. Let's go back inside. Let's go back inside. Okay, so a little bit of butter. There's a lot of fat in the cake already, so you don't need to go too cray. I mean, come on. It's so much better. Add a little more. A little sizzle, sizzle. Brown buttered labna banana cake, refried. This butter drenched, salty. Honestly, that's one of the better bites I've had in a very long time. Get this, I cracked open the labna to start making the banana bread, and just like the sour cream last episode, it was moldy. Well, we've been gone for two weeks, so. Yeah, but it's kind of a bad look. Everyone thinks my entire fridge is moldy. Well, it is. I got a moldy fridge. 